Hey everyone, this is Pastor Steve and Pastor Aaron of that church and here it is Tuesday. No, <laughs> no, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday <laughs> now. <laughs> Just checking. But so here we are in 1 Timothy chapter 3 today. Yes, we are. And before we get started, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. All right. We'll get right into it because we have to have him, right? Mm -hmm. All right. We do too. So, <laughs> Father God. We have to have you. Mm -hmm. We have to have you speaking in our hearts, teaching us your word, showing us how to use this in our daily life, showing us how we're to live right here and now. Mm -hmm. And we have to have your help. We look to you in every area of our lives to come in and be God in our lives and show us your glory. Show us that your hand is at work in our lives, your eye continually upon us, watching over us, seeing to us in every way, Lord. And we thank you for that. We thank you that you speak in our hearts, through our mouths, and in the hearts of all those that will ever hear. And we thank you that you confirm your word with signs following. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're looking for results, aren't we? Yes. And here, we're going to be talking about results before we get into chapter 3, I want to go back to chapter 2, and gosh, if I can, I want to go back to chapter 1. Oh boy. Because that's where God was leading me to this morning, and, and it all ties it together. Yeah. God's, gee, God hmm, was talking through the Apostle Paul mm -hmm. to Timothy, yes. instructing him on how to live this Christian life. Yeah. And and that's what I want you to see today, is how we're to live this life, what we're to aspire to, what we're to, to move toward. Mm -hmm. You know, we're moving toward God, always. Yeah. If, if we turn around and start heading the other way, is that not repentance in the wrong direction? Yeah. Is that mm -hmm. going the wrong direction? It is. And you know, in, in business, in life, I did that so many times. God would do be be showing me how to live my life and working with me in my business and I would do something that just turned it around and <sighs> headed the wrong direc direction quick and I it was a hurt to me. Yeah. And you know, God would let me get into that because you know, some of those things I wouldn't listen to him or I would listen to him. I would listen to him and then you know, I can get so busy and caught up into what was going on that I started just taking the reins and running with it myself mm -hmm. and take them back from God. And, and that's not the thing you want to do. Right. You want to stay right there before God. Right. Right. Seeing to him, him seeing to everything in your life. You have to put your faith in him for everything in your life, for how to run your business, how how to love your wife. How to how love to, your family. How to love yourself. Yeah. And here, we're going to get into some of these things today of how that all takes place. And I want to go back to chapter 1 in verse 12. It says, I give thanks to him. To who? To him. To God. Mm -hmm. To Jesus, who has, in, uh, who has granted me the needed strength and made me able made me able he made me that's that's like making a vase and making it for a, a good good thing you know to hold flowers <laughs> let's just say that because <laughs> there's all kinds of weird things out there but i want you to see that he made us a way but does that mean we have to go that way no we can turn around and go the other way yep he always gives us a choice so I want you to see this. He says, granted me the needed strength and made me able, made me able. He's making us able for this. Christ Jesus, our Lord, because he has judged and counted me faithful and trustworthy, wow. appointing me to this stewardship. This is a stewardship of his word. If, if God shows you something, do you think it's just for you? But he's wanting to, 
just like how he poured his love out into our lives. He poured his love out into our lives that we can we can work with his love and get comfortable with his love. Right. And then we can go out and love other people. Exactly. Allowing God to love other people through us. Yeah, that's Do you true. see how that works? And this is what he's talking about. <laughs> he has judged me and counted me faithful and trustworthy, appointing me to this stewardship of this ministry. This is a ministry, all of us are called to this ministry, to show forth God's word, to show forth how God is, yeah. to be a witness of who he is and how he wants to be to them. Yeah, in relationship with them. Right, right. And so then we saw at the beginning of chapter 2 that we're supposed to pray for all men. Yeah. That prayer, it, it keeps peace in your life. Mm -hmm. in, and here, because you're praying for your wife, you're praying for your husband, it, because you're doing that, it opens up God to speak into your life what they need. Right. And here, you can follow those thoughts. And, and she could follow those thoughts of what God is saying that I need. Right? Right. You see that? Just in the same way, I want to, I want to point this out here also, it's the same way that you pray for your pastor, you pray for your spiritual leaders, your those that that are uh, helping you in uh, helping you to mature, right? Yeah, and even those that you work for, like your employers, could right. be qualified in that right. verse too. If you want peace there, yeah. pray for them. Yeah. And here, this was such a an awesome testimony right in '88, whenever I got born again again. God had me working at Domino's Pizza, and my sister had just got born again years before that, uh, maybe a year before that, and she was working with God, and I saw, and she, she would give testimony. Here, she said she would have a problem with certain people at work, and, and God led her to start praying for those people, and peace came in. Wow. And here, then that relationship was made right, and there wasn't a conflict anymore, but she was able to work with them as if there was never a problem. Wow. You, you see that? Yeah. And, and that's what God wants. He wants you to affect your world by praying for them. As you pray for people, it does. It opens it up for that way in your life that God can talk to you about that other person, right. that relationship, right. as well as into their life that he can talk to you. Right? And here, it, it goes on to pray for your leaders, your spiritual leaders, those that are in authority in the government, right. in the place that you're at. Right. It's, it's so that you can have that peace in life. And that's how he, he ends it down here. He says, for, for such praying is good and right, and it is pleasing and acceptable to God, our Savior, who wishes all men to be saved right. and increasingly. increasingly to perceive and recognize and discern and know precisely and correctly the divine truth. Mm. He wants everybody to know that. Of course he does. And so that we can live that peaceable life. Right. Have peace in our lives. That's, that's what he wants for us. Yeah. He knows turmoil is going to be out there. And here, how much more in the day that we live today do we have turmoil? Definitely. Coming from the top. Right. And here, if we are praying, it, it keeps us in peace where we're at. Because we don't have to be under that. We can be under the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and His right way of doing things, which will supersede far us. If we keep ourselves in that kingdom, it'll supersede us out of that other kingdom. Will there still be things happening around us? Yeah. Go back and look at Psalm 91. A thousand can fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. Right? Right. But you're in the secret place of the Most High. As you witness the reward of the wicked. Yeah. Does that mean everybody out there is wicked? No. It means that they've taken wicked thoughts and acted on those wicked thoughts more than God's thoughts. Right. You see it? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so 
that kind of brings us into this, this chapter three of what we have to do and what we're heading toward. We're heading toward God and his way of doing and being right. Right? Yeah. Okay. So keep that in mind as we go through this because, you know, he starts off talking about this is for the, the bishop or the overseer or the pastor, those that are in charge. Right. Well, whatever is good for the, the goose, goose is good for, for the gander, right? They say. <laughs> but here, here I'm quoting other things now. <laughs> but that's, that's what I want you to see is it's good for all of us it is. to aspire yeah. toward, right? right? Head toward and, and be moving with God in these things because it's only going to bring good into your life. It's going to bring that maturity and that perfection, growing right. closer to Him and right. our relationship with Him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. The saying is true and irrefutable. If any man eagerly seeks the office of bishop, superintendent, overseer, he desires an excellent task, work. Now a bishop, superintendent, overseer, must give no grounds for accusation, but must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, circumspect and temperate and self-controlled. He must be sensible and well-behaved and dignified and lead an orderly, disciplined life. He must be hospitable, showing love for and being a friend to the believers, especially strangers or foreigners, and be a capable and qualified teacher not given to wine, not combative, but gentle and considerate, not quarrelsome, but forbearing and peaceable, and not a lover of money, insatiable for wealth and ready to obtain it by questionable means. Verse, uh, Let's go back to verse 6. He, he must didn't not... didn't get there yet. Oh, We're only didn't... on verse 4. Oh, gosh. I, I lost my place. That's Excuse okay. me. <laughs> here we go. There's a lot of words here. Right. He must rule his own household well, keeping his children under control with true dignity, commanding their respect in every way and keeping them respectful. For if a man does not know how to rule his own household, how is he to take care of the church of God? Verse 6. He must not be a new convert or he may develop a beclouded and stupid state of mind as the result of pride be blinded by conceit and fall into the condemnation that the devil once did. So I want you to see in verse 2, it's talking about self-control. Mm -hmm. Sensible. Sensibility. Right. right? Yeah. And here, then it gets into leading orderly life. If, if you're leading something that's orderly, you've taken time and thought out some of these things ahead of time. Right. Right? And as you move forward with God, your trust in Him to lead you and guide you through all the, the intricate things that you're going to have to do that day. And think of the peace that you have, because we talked about peace earlier. Think of the peace you have when you're living an orderly life, because the opposite would be living a life of chaos. <laughs> and you're just running around, and they call it, you know, like running around with your head cut off like a chicken. That's not what we want to confess over ourselves. Right. We don't want right. to be doing that, and there's no peace in that. Right. And here, then it comes down in verse 3. It says, not given to wine. Why is that? If, if you're giving yourself to wine, you're not giving yourself to God. You're not giving yourself in prayer, and like he started off with in chapter 2, right? You're not giving yourself to these things of praying, praying for those your leaders, those that are over you, those that are in your, your life. Mm -hmm. As as you're not doing that, what are you doing? You're worrying. And here, a lot of people get into drinking because they're worried or they're they're caught up or they need an escape valve. As, yeah, yeah. Right? They need an escape to get away from the turmoil. Mm -hmm. Well, get away from the turmoil by getting into God, getting into something other than what you can do down here in, right. in your flesh, yeah. right? Right. So coming down to six, it says he must not be a new convert. We're talking about those that are in charge shouldn't be a new convert or else they could fall into this pride thing that the devil fell into. That, that shows you right there what happened to him 
to cause him to think he could be exalting himself above God right. or even be like the Most High God right. when he wasn't on the same level as God. Do you yes. see that? Yeah, but it's a it, there's so there's some encouragement in that verse, as in he must not be a new convert, but he'll get there. Yeah, you know he'll get as yeah. we it's mature. It's growth as, that yeah. we're looking for. So good. Verse seven. Furthermore, he must have a good reputation and be well thought of by those outside the church, lest he become involved in slander and incur reproach and fall into the devil's trap. In like manner, the deacons must be worthy of respect, not shifty and double talkers, but sincere in what they say, not given to much wine, not greedy for base gain, craving wealth and restoring resorting to ignoble and dishonest methods of getting it. So here, he starts talking about the next person, right? Here, the deacons, those, those that are helping in the church, right? Mm -hmm. Let, let's just leave it as something simple as that. They're helping out. They see the need of getting this word out. They see the need of, of helping other people come up and grow up, yeah. right? Right. And it's saying here, don't be, don't be shifty. Uh, I think that's how I said it. <laughs> he he. Be well thought of by those outside. Did I move? Okay. The oh, church. In verse eight. It does say shifty. Worthy of okay, respect, right. not shifty and double talkers. I went back to seven. So being double talkers or being shifty, you know, those those are people that's trying to be sly and sell you on something. That that person. If, if they can't present the gospel as, as how God is using it in people's lives or how we're to, to move toward God and they're trying to sell somebody on something or, or, or get something from them. And here, you can get, get into the idea of, Paul even said this in, uh, in, in uh, <laughs> the previous chapters we were in, that he said, those there's some that will preach this out of for stomach sake or yeah. for gain sake right <clears throat> and there's those that will preach it out of love preaching it out of love brings people up because they want to be like the one that's that's teaching them and here in all actuality they want to be like him mm -hmm. the one that gave us all right. of these good thoughts right? right okay verse 9 they must possess the mystic secret of the faith Christian truth as hidden from ungodly men with a clear conscience. And let them also be tried and investigated and proved first. Then, if they turn out to be above reproach, let them serve as deacons. The women likewise must be worthy of respect and serious, not gossipers, but temperate and self-controlled, thoroughly trustworthy in all things. And if you remember yesterday, they were talking, Paul was talking to Timothy about women not being in certain positions in the church, but he's saying here that women can be, but they need to be not gossipers. They need to be temperate and self-controlled. And so that, I believe that's a progression that women were making at that time from having been in the cultish or paganistic religions and moving over into being, you know, followers of Christ. Yeah. Verse 12. Let deacons be the husbands of but one wife, and let them manage their children and their own households well. For those who perform well as deacons acquire a good standing for themselves, and also gain much confidence and freedom and boldness in the faith, which is founded on and centers in Christ Jesus. Although I hope to come to you before long, I am writing these instructions to you, so that if I am detained, you may know how people ought to conduct themselves in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar, and stay the prop and support of the truth. Some of these things, I want you to see that it's not just for those that are in authority. Right, just right? for the deacons or the bishops. As he's coming down here and he's finishing up, he's, he's really saying that this is how everybody should be aspiring. Yes. We, we all have callings. Right. We all have that, that thing, that, that niche, that... that that which we're supposed to bring for God to the world. The right. reason that we've been called into this grace, into this, into this life of faith, right? 
Because each one of us, if we take our place, we can take his anointing to the world. And that's, that's what that church is about. As we see what he's called us into, what he's gifted us with, we can actually touch our world in a specific way that nobody else really can. And unless you turn away from God and go a different way, then God will find a way to get it done. That's right. He will bring a person up. And we've seen that in, in many of the people's lives that, that we've, we've kind of come up under. We, we've seen them have to take other roles because the other roles weren't being taken charge of. Right. That, that those people missed their place, that left their place. If they leave their place, God will get things done. But he would rather do it through you. He wants to move through you in such a way that he can touch the world that you touch right. through him. Yep, that's right? good. Yep. So he can touch it through you, right? As, as we're seeing all of this kind of finish up in this chapter, well, I'll let my wife finish talking. And then we'll... I have one more verse. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and great and important and weighty, we confess, is the hidden truth. The mystic secret of godliness. He, God, was made visible in human flesh, justified and vindicated in the Holy Spirit, was seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on in the world, and taken up in glory. Right. So as as we conclude today, <laughs> we want you to know that that these things are far our maturity. Something yeah. we're to look toward in God and and see that we can have these things right and how how did Paul say it all the way back there it's it's this uh, in verse 12 of chapter 1 it says I give thanks to him who has granted me the needed strength he's granted me the needed strength to aspire to these things to grow in these things to grow in these things yeah. and here he, he came and found you where you were at, but he never intended to leave you mm, there. That's so he intended good. you to come up and out of every problem that you have in your life. Right. If, if it's health, he, I'm sorry, f physical sickness or something like that, he intended you to come out in health. Yes. If, if it was, you know, in poverty, in, in poverty or, or any other thing, he intends you to come up and out of it. Yeah. And, and to be like him. That's what we're aspiring to, right. is to be like him, moving toward the world he has placed us in and about. Yep. All right? That's good. So there's always that one thing that we want you to remember, <laughs> is that, that God, God loves, loves you, you, and we love you, and, and that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Now take your place. As you take his anointing to, to your, your world. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.